I wanted to ask Mr. Adams, can you give the community an overview of your understanding of, of your goal or what you're being charged to do? Sure. Um, you know, so I, uh, I, you know, in the, for contract terms, it's to assist with the review and development of curriculum. And so to be a, of any asset that I can be to, um, to the district's, district staff and the board in, in doing that. Um, I, uh, you know, I've been very clear with, uh, with the, that if there's any request of me to look at a certain grade level or subject that's actually being asked of me and not something that I'm taking initiative of on, on my own to do that, and I'm not doing anything, uh, and I will not be look, work, looking at anything or working on anything unless it's been requested uh, or I've been directed to do that. And, um, and then also, I'm very clear. I try to be very clear with the board and with district staff that the point of um, of my recommendations or review and, and what and whatnot is for them to weigh it and determine if that's if that's um, helpful to them in their in their process and in their in the curriculum that they use in their dis in the district, um, or if it's something that um, that you're looking at. Like, you know what? That's you know that that may be helpful in this sense situation, and not that one. Um, and so my goal is to just try, is to try to raise student outcomes um, to make sure the students are um, uh, that are receiving an excellent education that teachers are supported in doing that and uh, and so those those are my goals. So just building on that, what would sure. be uh, measures of how would we measure some of those outcomes? Sure. Uh, well, I mean, uh, I'm not I. I uh, you know, state tests and the like are one, one among other factors that one takes into consideration when they're looking at uh, the success of a curriculum or instruction or general approach. Um, I I don't think it's the be all end all of everything. I think there, there are ways in which um, uh, in which things that t tests are good at capturing, things that tests are, are not good at capturing, and and um, and I think it's. You know, I, I think one of one of my uh, I, I was I was looking over. I was trying to think about okay, so how can how can um, what would this look like if on, on a state test uh, if you're using that as a standard? Um, and I, I was looking over the Pennsylvania Penridge's scores in, in seventh grade, and uh, you know, in in this past year, and of course this is post pandemic, so I get that um, post doing remote schooling. But it, about 70, well, sorry, 61 percent of seventh graders were proficient or higher in the state ELA, um, and uh, and and before that, before back in 2019, so three years before, right, um, it was closer to 75. So that's I mean that's a that's a substantial drop, of course. And in eighth grade, it was 57 percent um, of eighth graders, and before it was 68 percent, 68 percent. Um, what it's still working out to is is we've gone you know we went from you know uh, there's you still have uh, nowadays four out of every ten students in seventh grade who might not be proficient in, in this which I think is one of the reasons why the reading English language arts courses are are being proposed in the first place is to try to, re to remediate that um, and in eighth grade it's four or five of every ten students um, so you're kind of we're kind of at a point of like doing every other so I want to see that. Move up, and and I, I I mean I'm I'm of the opinion that we we really I mean I know it's not necessarily national trend wise the standard, but I mean I think you want to have a, a, eighty to ninety percent of your students uh, proficient and higher, and I think that's achievable. Um, and so it's just kind of trying to keep moving that direction. However, that's not the only factor. I think one of the things um, that that's a really it's more anecdotal. It's more more talking with parents and, and getting in word of mouth but um, you know I I personally I, I want and I, I, I'm sure um, all great teachers feel the same way they, they want you want students to, to be, really be enjoying the classes and you really want them to be talking about what they're learning at home and just kind of, kind of sharing it with the parents and something the parents notice and take, take note of and so um, that's more and I, I, I share that as a criteria as well um, because I think the test and numbers can can leave out that component of it. So I don't think you can just go with one. But those are two 
two things I look at. I think there are other things you can, you can consider as well, but those are my main two that kind of are both sides of that equation. Ms. Longren, would Ms. Vitale be able to come up and uh, follow up with Mr. Adams as well about social studies? Sure. 